Hey guys, it's Banner. Welcome back to Zelda Ocarina of Time. And in the last part, we just got the sword and shield and we basically did something, I don't know. And now we're entering... Wait for it. Inside the Deku Tree. So anyway, yeah, so... This is when the game really begins. The last part wasn't really that <laughs> great at explaining that, but trust me, this is where the game's really at. Um, so this is a new enemy. This guy looks the same because he is a Deku. He is the same Deku. However, this guy will lunge forward, which means you, if you cut him horizontally, you'll get a Deku stick. And by horizontally, I mean vertically. Uh, but he does drop his Deku nuts. Now, a Deku nut is an interesting item. You can throw it. It's a C item, by the way, and it will flash and stun the enemy, which can be handy, and there's quite a few things that you can do that will involve it. Um, okay, so I'll equip these two items like this. That's how you do it. And then, uh, I believe... Yeah, Y is C left, and X is C right. Now, the stick you can whip out and not use up. Of course, if you break the stick, then you'll use it up. But that's an intriguing thing to know. As long as the stick doesn't die, you can put the stick away. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so you'll be seeing me kind of play this game poorly because I'm not very good at this game. No, I, 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 I can at least beat it, and we're going for 100%, so it shouldn't be kind of, it shouldn't be that difficult into getting everything. That being said, though, you will be getting items throughout the game, uh, and in order to get 100%, you'll need to be going back to previous areas with your new items, but for the most part, I'm not going to, like, be entirely you know, uh, must grab every object in the game. Uh, before I go up, I would like to look at this wall. I am not voicing you. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so you can climb, you can climb walls like this. I may as well open this chest because this chest is now. Well, it's not now, but it gives us the dungeon map. Now, every dungeon has most dungeons have a dungeon map. Uh, there's the occasional, you know, there's the occasional one that doesn't have the dungeon map, but this is a dungeon map. You press start and you can see the map of the place. You can also see the map in the bottom left corner. If you're playing on the 3DS, by the way, uh, Y and X uh, map to quick quick items. You can map those to items, but there's also a, a 1 and 2 slot and you can use the touch screen to activate those items so you technically get four items also the map comes up on the touch screen for you guys to uh actually no no it comes up on the top screen some of it's on the top screen which is kind of handy um you can open a door by not reading <laughs> nappy's stuff yeah so the action icon is that's the blue icon this makes no sense to link by the way <laughs> oh snap now here's an interesting enemy. This guy is a Deku scrub. Bounces nuts. Basically, you hold the shield as you're Z targeting, and then he runs away. Now, if you kind of walk near him, he'll be like, "Ow, oh, 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 forgive me, master. If I give you a clue, will you let me go? When you jump off a high cliff, if you hold the stick forward, you will roll on the ground when you land and won't get hurt from the fall." I can't guarantee it will work, though, if the cliff is really, really high. <laughs> well, try it if you are feeling bold. <laughs> Wario. Oh, gosh, it was Barrio. Uh, also, by the way, don't expect... Or, or always expect rooms to be operated by, um... By life force. Uh, yeah, this is where I was going. Oh, no, so the platform lowers, and we can't get back. But there was a ladder there. Interesting. Now... If we open this chest... You got the thing! You got the fairy slingshot! Uh, now the fairy slingshot is, you may be thinking, dude, you're getting just tons of items. Dude, we're like, half an hour in, you've got three items, by the end of the game we're gonna have like 180. Um, but you don't really get that many... Like, for example, we're not gonna get any items for quite a while. Um, now, that being said though, uh, that being said though, uh, it, it's kind of to show off, like, how the game mechanics work, and you can also go over here and, like, look at, look at the, the map, you can also see what rooms you've been in, which is very nice, and you can see what room you are in. You can't exactly see where you are in the map, 
just yet. By the way, this is your progressometer. You'll be able to tell how how far in the game you are, and you can hold stuff. Uh, you'll be able to upgrade item capacities in a bit. Uh, now this is kind of something interesting to note. You just go over here. There's a tiny chest, and you can get a recovery heart. A recovery heart, basically, you'll find them everywhere. Um, yeah. So the Z buttons do the do the job of the C down. Uh, so now you'll be able to look at that now. Note the center of the screen, and you can kind of tell wh where the center of the screen is, because it'll kind of be like that. But you can basically do stuff. Now, you can also Z-target objects, and thus move around. And that- I wasn't Z-targeting anything, but yeah. Uh, so, if you shoot the ladder, it'll fall down, and you can progress, which is pretty cool. Ah. Okay. Um, okay, so these skull chillers basically prevent you from going up this wall because you may be wondering, well, that one's not really in the way. You can go around it. Nope, they'll chase you. So the tip is to use your slingshot and you can shoot them down. Now, the slingshot uses those seeds that we saw in the store, which is why I said, which is why I said they're pointless now because we also got, by the way, you can find all these Deku seats anywhere, like, enemies will drop them, so you won't really be in a terrible need for them. Also, you won't really need the, the slingshot for too much of the game, so don't expect to use it. Um, so, don't, ex don't, don't need, you don't need to buy seats all the time, but, you know, just saying, like, if you're running low, it's always handy to get them. Um, Deku Nuts and Deku Sticks, again, you don't really run out of those that much. You don't really run out of items that quickly. Um, Possibly arrows, which I haven't spoiled the items. I'm, I'm going for a bit of a spoiler-free kind of thing, though, so I'm not explaining like what's happening. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you see stuff, and I'll be kind of just talking about them a little bit. Oh gosh, it is a big skull tula. Those were little skull tulas. Skull tulas. Some people say that, but it's like tarantula, so it's like skull tula. It should be like that. It's soft belly is the weak point. So you, you click it, and then it's like, oh. That must be it. By the way, that jump attack deals twice as much damage. You do that by, while Z targeting, you hit A. Uh, B also does like slashes, so yeah. That's what that's what it means by attack. Uh, okay, now here's a nice puzzle. Um, so that's the skull tool there, and you can see that there's a little thing over here, so you're like, okay, I'll stand on it. What does this thing do? It raises the platforms. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna go over here now. Now notice how they've got the guys who give you the Deku sticks. So you may be going, hmm, what do I do there? Well, if you walk up to here, by the way. And I like this dungeon, because it basically just kind of shows off what dungeons do without being terribly difficult, although it is kind of tricky straight away. Now this is the compass, you can see, uh, with the compass you can see the locations of hidden things in the dungeon. So now on the map we can see where we entered in the room, which is specified by the red arrow, where we are in the room, which is specified by the yellow arrow, and we can see chests. But also, you can see, if you look on the map, you can also see which floor the boss is on, and even the room where it is, and, but you can see where all the chests are as well. So basically there's one more chest in this dungeon besides that one. You may be wondering, how do you get that one? Why are they giving me Deku Barbers? Um, now here's here's a nice puzzle. The Deku Stick doesn't die immediately from fire. And here's a nice little tip. I, I'm, I think someone later in the game tells you this, maybe? Uh, by the way, that's how you open the door. Um, so you need to know that. Um, but if you use a sword, even when the Deku Stick is on fire, it won't uh, kill you. Uh, duh. It won't destroy the stick, which means you can basically do all these fire puzzles without ruining your sticks. Now, by the way, here's a nice little... it's not terribly nice, but... Here is... You destroyed a gold sculpture. You got a token proving you destroyed it. This is a side quest. You don't need to destroy any sculptures at all. 
You don't need to destroy any Skulljulers in this game at all. And by gold Skulljulers. But, if you want to get 100%, you're going to want to do that. And also, there are a lot of cool things you can get uh, with the gold Skulljulers. None of them required, but believe me, they'll be quite handy in the game. Uh, now, whether they add up to, I'm not going to say anything. But, there's 100 in the game, so... And it's in your best intent to try and get them. There are three in this dungeon. Uh, straight away. Okay. Okay, um... So now... Now here's the thing. Down there, you know how there was the spider web, right? Well, spider webs... Are not really known for being strong. Yeah, I... I the first time I played this game, I got kind of tricked tricked out. I was like, how do you do any of this? Um, and this next puzzle is kind of tricky. Uh, but basically it's just try everything on everything. That's how you do this. Uh, so anyway, now there's two more gold Skotulas. One of them's right there. He takes two um, slingshots, by the way. So I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to grab on to the vine, and I'm going to grab the Skotula. So you destroyed a golf Skotula, you got a token proving you destroyed it. Uh, so yeah, so, um, that being said though, this is how you swim by the way. You always swim on the surface, but if the water is shallow enough, you don't need to swim on the surface. It's kind of weird that Z targeting by the way, because on, on the classic controller in the game view, it, you use the, um, Ah oh, dang, I can't reach it from there. Uh, use the L button to do it. The Z, the Z buttons don't do it. Um, let's see if I can... Oh, I still on the switch. What does this switch do? It makes fire. Okay, I got it. Uh, those are the three uh, gold Skotulas, by the way, in this dungeon. So, and you can get all three of them right away, which is very nice of them to do that show you something. Uh, I believe this fire stays on forever, but um, don't quote me on that. Uh, yeah, they give you quite a few recovery hearts, which is odd, because basically bushes and pots and whatnot, they'll give you recovery hearts. Now, here's, here's a puzzle. Okay, so you got your fire. Now, you're going to need to walk on the shallow part. And you can jump over here without actually needing to swim, and thus you can burn the, f burn the web. And then my stick died. My stick died! <laughs> Um, oh, there's another guy. That's not the right R button, but that worked. <laughs> I hit ZR. Don't know why. Uh, there you go. Please forgive me, Master. I'll never do it again. If you spare me, I'll teach you something cool. <laughs> 98, by the way, 98. You will never beat my brothers up ahead unless you punish them in the proper order. The order is 2, 3, 1. 23 is number one! Do you think I'm a traitor? I, I, I really like... Like, uh... Just what they've done with this game. It's a, it's a very good game. It's just... Uh, it makes my mouth water. Uh, by the way, so yeah, you see me smashing these bushes for stuff? Every bush. Not... That is not the right thing. That's the problem with using a stick, is that, you know, that happens. Um... So anyway... If you play previous Zelda games, this would come as a no-brainer, but trust me, the first time I played this, I was like, there's an eye there, uh, what do I do? Use the door, I don't know. Um, after you get, oh, don't commentate, Navi. Um, anyway, so here's the trick. So basically, since you can't jump in this game, and there's no Rocco's Feather, so you can't jump at all, um, like, of course, you can do, like, the run, run across gaps. Uh, you'll need to do something. This switch lowers the water level. How do you do this? Well, since you can't swim down specifically... Oh, you have to jump on that. Also, there's a time limit. Um, but since you can't, um... Uh... So even though you can't jump, when you're swimming, if you're still, you can hit the A button and you'll dive down. 
which is a pretty nice feature. There you go. So yeah, yeah, the jump attack deals twice as much damage, so always keep that in mind, because if you if you get enough time to do a jump attack, you may as well, because, because it'll speed up the process. Now, if you see blocks like, like this kind of, you can grab onto it with the A button while you're standing next to it. If you're holding the A button, then you can push it, but if you're if you're running against the block, and then you press A, you can jump on t onto the block. So basically, if you stand next to the block, you can grab it and push it. Now this is a very nice way of teaching you how to do this, while the camera sticks to the wall. Uh, I may as well c clear this dungeon, like the entire thing. Because, you know, yeah, it's not, it's not too long of a dungeon. So yeah, while you're walking against the, the box thing, you can do that and yeah. So just just further stressing in the point, Deku stick, fire, fire. There you go, so that's how you do it. Now, we appear in this room. By the way, I like how you come up from behind this guy. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like enemies are dealing half heart damage. Um. By the way, Skyward Sword, starting with six hearts. Whoa. Oh gosh, it's Goma Lava. Look out when it's ready to pounce. We can hit it. I wasn't even looking at that guy, and I hit him. So yeah. Um. I, I like how they introduce these guys. These guys will basically be in the boss. The boss bit. Um. Get the stick out. And yeah, set fire to that. Oh no, there's a trumpet man. It's a deck bottom there, but uh, this room has two side paths. Uh, two two at two kind of notches in it. This one is the way to go. Now the compass is handy because you can basically look at like where you've come in through the room. It, it's a very handy thing. Now, that being said, the dungeon, both the dungeon map and the and the compass are not necessary to beat dungeons at all. They're not necessary, so we don't even need to find them. However, they are handy to use because one, you can navigate dungeons, and especially when you get to like things like the water temple. The water temple, if you don't have the map, it's a pain. Now, here's a nice little thing, though. When you come back into this uh, temple, which by the, I, uh, I'll constantly be calling it dungeons or temples. I, I can't make up my mind. Uh, by the way, when you save uh, in a dungeon or temple and turn off the game, or when you die, you'll come back at the top of the dungeon temple. Um, uh, like, where the entrance is. Um, now, that's a bit of a problem, because unfortunately, like, we had to go through all of that, which is why they, they always like making these nice little shortcuts. So for example, we push that box, now we don't have to go through all those rooms, we just jump right into the center, and then we're into this room, then we just climb up the box and we're up onto this ledge. Uh, now that being said, uh, did that guy respawn? <laughs> I swear he did. That being said, so it's like, okay, I'll try and get the fire away. Now this is where the puzzle comes in. Uh, it also kind of teaches you about how you jump in this game. Now when you're running towards a ledge, You'll kind of jump. Now that wasn't a good example of it, but he this is a good example, okay? So you grab that, I'm going to rotate the camera a bit, uh, you jump over there. Now you just run towards the ledge, and then you do your roll. And now, set the web on fire, which is unfortunately not the best thing. But water will break your fall, and we're in the last room. I will grab one of these hearts. Look at that lighting effect. Uh, Majora's Mask is a very good game as well, the sequel to this game. It's a direct sequel. Now... There you go! Now this guy will kind of jump about, and I'll be like... Are you kidding me, what? Are you... what? There you go, I got him. How did you know our secret? How irritating! It's so annoying that I'm going to reveal the secret of Queen Goma to you. In order to administer the coup de grace, Queen Goma, strike with your sword while she's stunned. 
Oh, Queenie. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's a good threat when everyone just kind of gives up. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, so... And then the boss is in here, so I may as well drag this part a bit longer just so we can, you know... You know, beat the boss. What? Hmm. Now, th this is a very nice way to introduce a boss. Oh! <laughs> divide by zero! I don't know why Gomer has a divide symbol for an iris. Okay. Parasitic Arm and Arachnid. Now, Gomer is a terribly difficult boss, mainly because... When she's doing that, just slingshot, and then jump attack, or just sword in her eye area. Now then, she's like, "Oh, stuff you! I'm going on the ceiling." Uh, by the way, it is possible to beat Goma quite quickly. Um, by the way, I like the boss rush mode in uh, the 3DS game because you can just come back to all these bosses and just do stuff. That wrong button. Wrong button. Oh no, uh, I meant to do that, to show off her attack, that she lays poop. These are actually uh, eggs of those enemies that we saw before. You can destroy the eggs and then you don't have to fight those enemies. There you go. Hiya! 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 Uh, see, it is possible to deal enough hits to only do it once. Uh, so she only does like two, two stages, and in fact, in fact, Goma leaves a lot of, lot of time to, to attack her. Example then, hiya, and that's the first boss of the game. Classic N64, just deteriorate the texture. So anyway, that was the first uh, dungeon of the game. Every dungeon will give you a slingshot. No, <laughs> will give you a heart container. Uh, heart containers are very valuable. If you're going for a three heart run, of course you don't want them. But that's just a fan thing. Just be in the game with only three hearts. Um, now heart containers will give you an extra heart, which is very handy, and you want to look. I, w I was going to say you want to look out for them, but they basically give it to you at the end of every dungeon. And the only way you can get more health is by gathering heart pieces by doing side quests. So anyway, I'll enter this next part. I'll see you kids next time. See you kids then.